Alright everybody, welcome back to a brand new PDCGO video guys, and today we're going to be looking at an archetype that I have built here on PDCGO, and we'll see if it's any good or could be potentially decent in the future. Now, before I get into this, in my rotation video I made, I screwed up a bit, I said that um, Wally was rotating, no Wally got reprinted in generations, I had said Hoopa was rotating, no Hoopa is getting reprinted, already got a reprint into the tins. So I was a bit wrong in the set review. I also left out Lysander. For some reason, I thought Lysander got reprinted in Steam Siege. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I thought Lysander got a Steam Siege reprint. That's why I didn't add it, but I was wrong. Lysander is gonna be rotating. So, a bit of an idiot, but I think, uh, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Lysander is gonna be rotating. But, you know, there you go. I messed up a bit. I, I, I left out a few cards. I screwed up a bit with... Um, what cards are actually staying. Ladio CX is also staying in the format, so yeah. Forgive me. Forgive me for screwing up a little bit. Um, but anyways, let's get into today's deck. Today, we're going to be looking at a Trevenant Lycanroc deck. Now, Trevenant has always been a bit of a unique... Like, it's a decent card, okay? It's really cool with Vileplume, but it's never taken off. Like, Trevenant hasn't performed very well. In fact, I'd say its best partner right now has been, like, Garbodor... So, yeah, Trevenant just hasn't exploded like it wanted to, I think. Um, now, its attack poltergeist is very good. For DC, you do 30 damage, your opponent reveals their hand, which, you know, already is pretty good. And then you can do 30 damage for each trainer you find there. So, you can do a lot of damage. Again, it's trainer cards, so it counts for both items, supporters, and tools and stadiums. Which is really good, because all those cards are trainer cards. It's not just, like, items. So that immediately makes Poltergeist a pretty strong attack. You can do a lot of damage. The problem with Poltergeist is it's so easy for your opponent to control their hands. You, I think it's a little inconsistent. The fact that your opponent can easily just say, well, okay, I already know that you're going to try and, you know, Poltergeist me. I'm just going to play as much cards from my hand as I can so that Poltergeist can only do 60 damage. That's what makes Poltergeist weak in my opinion, and that's what makes it better with Vileplume. Now, I think Poltergeist can still be good with a card called N. I mean, you can end your opponent in the early games, give them a new hand of 6, they can't play any trainers that they draw into, and then you can Poltergeist them there. So Poltergeist is definitely a decent attack. Now, another cool thing about Trevenant, it is a grass type, so you can use it with Force Giant Plant, meaning on your first turn you can get a Trevenant in play, but even better, you can get a Trevenant Break in play with Force Giant Plants on your first turn. Trevenant Break is a cool card to add. Now, we're never going to use Silent Fear, but we're actually mainly going to be using its um, typing. Now, Garboder and Espeon are very popular right now. They are both weak to Psychic types, so once you kind of go off with Trevenant, you can be a grass type, so you can, you know, go through Lapras GX, you can go through Lycanroc GX, um, Zygarde GX pretty nicely, but when you're playing against Espeon or Garboder, you can go into Trevenant Break and then hit them for Psychic Weakness, and then you're going to go through Garbodors and Espeons pretty nicely. So, right off the bat, Trevenant has two really good typing advantages. You can turn to a Psychic type, and you can also turn it into a Grass type. So you can hit for two different weaknesses, so that's pretty cool. Now, what you can use Trevenant with. Now, obviously, Vileplume is a deck people tried it out with. We're going to try it out with Lycanroc GX. Now, I wanted to make like a Lycanroc Yen Mega deck, but I found that deck not to be as powerful, because the problem I have with Yen Mega is you have to kind of use Yamega Break because the normal Yamega is good, but your opponent can obviously not even put a tool card on to their Yamega, so there's really no point. Um, so Yamega can only do like 50 damage, which is super weak. Now, Lycanroc GX is our backup attacker. Not only does it have the ability Bloodthirsty Eyes, which allows you to bring something up onto their bench, it's basically built in Lysander, but it's got a GX attack, which can be a very good attack. It's got Dangerous Rogue, which does 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. If they have a full bench of 5, you're going to be doing 250 damage. Not to mention Choice Band and Strong Energy, you can do an easy like 300 damage. So, Dangerous Rogue can be an attack to one-shot something that gets in your way. It also has Claw Slash, which we can use. It's a decent attack. Um, it's not going to one-shot a lot of the time because you can, you know, you can turn that into 130 with a Strong Energy. 160 with a Choice Band, but 160 doesn't take one-shots. But it's still a good attack regardless. Um, so we are going to be using Lycroc as our backup attacker. It also is a fighting type, so you can use it as a way to handle Trampa and Tauros if they get in your way, which is pretty cool to see. 
So the deck kind of just rely revolves around using Trevenant, which has two good typings. You can do big damage, punish your opponent for playing all their items. Um, then you can use Lycanroc GX as like a backup attacker. You can use Bloodthirsty Eyes. Um, you can use Claw Slash to uh, make some big plays there. And then you can use Dangerous Rogue as like a big Jets tech to take like a big one shot. Now, other cards in the deck we have a 1 1 Octillery line. Octillery mainly here for draw support. Abyssal Hand is just too good. You could also put Mallow in the deck. But I can't find room for Mallow, unfortunately, but Mallow is an option. Uh, we also play a two, we play two Lele's. Lele obviously is in the deck for Wonder Tag. Um, being able to grab any supporter you want is really good. You can also use it for Energy Drive. You know, the deck does play DCE, so why not use Energy Drive, right? So Lele is another good attacker. Now, we do play one Shaman. The reason for Shaman is because if you're trying to get a turn one Trevenant with Force Giant Plants, you can use Shaman to draw some extra cards to help you out. Also, since Trevenant relies on DCE, it's pretty easy to whiff your DCE, so Shaman can help you there. We also play other cards to get your energy. One of the problems I found with this deck when playtesting before I made the video is that finding the DCEs was super annoying because it never actually worked. Like, I struggled to get my DCEs, so I threw in a few extra cards to help me on that. Um, but Shaman is good for your Trevenants to try and get like a turn 1 Trev break on. So that's why we got Shaman in the deck to help us out there with draw support. Those are all of our Pokemon in the deck. We go into our items. We have a few questionable ones. You know, Energy Lotto, why is it in the deck? Well, it's here because I think we need it. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Reveal an energy you find there, put in your hand. This will help us hit a DC on our first turn for Trevenant. One of the problems I have with this deck is hitting our DCEs. When I was playtesting without Energy Lotto and Shaman, I found that... Hitting DCEs was very hard. I whiffed a lot of my energies and it really cost me. So Energy Lotto helps us get our energy so that we can at least attack them turn one. And we do play two. One Field Blower to get rid of abilities. Obviously for playing against Garbodor, we're going to need Abyssal Hand and Bloodthirsty Eyes. One Level Ball since we can search out Remoraid, our Octillery, our Phantom, and our Rock Ruff. We do play one Rest Stretcher. Now I went with a split of Rest Stretcher and Revitalizer. Revitalizer is good because if you have a Force Giant Plants in play, you can just grab Phantom and Trevenant and put them right back down. Uh, but Rest Stretcher is obviously a way we can get back like Artillery or Lycanroc or something. Since Revitalizer only works for Grass Pokemon. So I went with a split of Rest Stretcher and Revitalizer. I mean, you can probably go two Stretchers if you feel like it. But I like having the split of the two. I think it works also good. We do play one Special Charge since, again, we do rely on DC and Strong Energy. So special energy is played in the deck and emphasized pretty heavily. So we are obviously are going to play that special charge. Four Ultra Balls to search out your deck for what you need. Four BS Seekers for the supporters. Uh, we do play the three Force Giant Plants. Four is a little too clunky since we only play the three Trevenants. So I just went with three Forest to help us get Trevenant play. I do want to put Trainer's Mail in the deck, but I can't really find room um, for that card, unfortunately. But Trainer's Mail could be another option you can put in the deck. Uh, we do play one Bridget. A turn one Bridget is really good with Trevenant. Um, but it could also be good in this deck because you can bridge it turn one, grab Rockruff, Remoraid, and Phantom on your first turn, which is nice. One Lysander. We don't really need two Lysanders because we already have Bloodthirsty Eyes, so what's the point? Even though we'll probably put Lycroc down, even sometimes you might not even use Bloodthirsty Eyes, you'll put the Lycroc down and not even use it, so it's like, well, there goes your Lysander opportunity. But I think one Lysander is fine when you already have Bloodthirsty Eyes in the deck. We basically have a total of seven Lysanders if you think about it. You count the VS Seekers for Lysander too. We do play four ends. Again, end is a very good card to be able to force your opponent to draw a new hand uh, and probably get some trainer cards that you can knock out or do big damage to them with Poltergeist. Because again, your opponent can control um, the outcome of Poltergeist. Four Sycamores for draw support. One teammates, since again, we do play Pokemon with 60 HP. Again, your opponent can easily knock out Phantom very easily, so we can use teammates to help us out there. Three choice bands, since the extra damage is highly needed, especially with Trevenant. Because, again, when your opponent can control your their hand, Poltergeist will do less damage. But with Choice Band, you can maybe hit for bigger numbers and maybe better numbers. Uh, two Float Stones to give your free retreat. This is very useful for Octillery um, and stuff like that. Two Strong Energies for your Lycanroc. Uh, four DCEs to attack with your Trevenant and your Lycanroc and your Lele. Now, I went with two Fighting Energies. And the reason I went with Fighting over, say, like Psychic or Rainbow Energy. Well, I was thinking of running Rainbow Energy because you can actually use Silent Fear. Um, but I was um, fighting energy because I found that sometimes you might need a turn to use a basic fighting on your Trevenant. I liked having the fighting in the deck. Now, I think Psychic and Rainbow Energy could be other good options over fighting energy because with Psy um, yeah, with Rainbow Energy, you can use Silent Fear. Maybe Silent Fear could be pretty good. Um, maybe if you don't want to use Dangerous Rogue, you can use Tapu Kier. I don't know if that's ever going to happen since Dangerous Rogue is really OP. 
It's up to you though. I think fighting is a little better because it is better to attack with Lycanroc over Trevenant Break. So that's why I went with that. But yeah, this is my Trevenant Lycanroc Rogue deck that I built here on PDCGO. I like this quite a bit. I think it's a pretty unique deck. Um, so yeah, let's go have some matches with the deck. See in action online and see if the deck could actually be a potentially decent Rogue deck. So let's go find out. Alright guys, let's go hop into some matches here with the Trevenant Lycanroc deck. We'll see it in action and we will see how good the deck does here. First match we will find, we are up against, it looks like it's a Garboder deck. It's definitely Garboder because fire and water is obviously for the evolution. So let's see what we're going to be, I'm going to start with. We do go first, which is pretty nice. Um, you know, if we have to use Lycanroc, that can work. We'll see if my opponent plays Dramp or not. Ooh, okay, so we actually got a pretty decent opening hand here. We got a Rock Rough start. We got Bridget, we got a Lele, so yeah, this hand is immediately a very good hand. So I, I like it, I like it quite a bit. Uh, now, again, if he's playing Espeon and Garb, Trevenant Break is going to be needed. He does start with a Tauros though, which is kind of uh, worrying because Tauros can wreck me pretty badly. I think I'll just do Bridget here, and grab Remoraid, Rock Ruff, and Phantom. Like, Tauros can just DC and just attack me, so I think I'll just bench, or put a DC on the other Rock Ruff on the bench. And just get ready for a DC. Now, hopefully he didn't have DC Lele, but no, okay, looks like he's just attaching a Psychic um, for the turn. I kind of wish I put the energy on my active, but again, I think it was better just to play it safe and put on the bench. Uh, because he easily could have just DC'd and Horn attacked me and knocked me out. And then we would have been in a bit of a pickle. Uh, so let's see here what else my opponent does. We gotta find our Floatstone and our Lycanroc here and an energy so that we can knock out this Tauros here and uh, put some pressure on him. We do see a Lysander though, and what is he gonna bring up? Um, okay, Phantom. Alright, so if he had a DC, he could have taken out my Rockruff, so that's good. And we topic a Sycamore, alright. I guess we could put Trevenant down. I mean, I don't think we're gonna attack with Trevenant here, but I mean, we might as well. It is a Trevenant deck. Maybe we can take him out here. Uh, if we can maybe hit, like, Choice Band here, so... I think first things first, we'll Ultra Ball, get rid of Lele and Sycamore. Kind of wish I wasn't getting rid of those cards in particular, because they are pretty important cards. But it's better than discarding an item card, I guess. So, we'll grab Octillery, and I think what I'll do is... I'll try and Poltergeist him. I don't want to end him, since he clearly didn't do a supporter, but... I'm actually going to end him here. Ooh, we actually got Floatstone. <laughs> well, there you go. If I didn't do... If I didn't do the uh, DC, I probably could have got a Lycanroc down. That's fine, though. We will end him here. I'll give him a new hand. We do hit Choice Band, so let's just hope we can take him out. It's not too hard. You know, if he has, like, maybe even, like, four trainers in his hand, we can maybe do a big damage to him. So let's go Poltergeist, and let's see. Uh, all right, four trainers. So we can do 150. He survives with 30 HP, which is kind of annoying, but we got some good damage on him. Now, obviously, we gave him a fresh new hand, which I didn't want to do. But I went for the risk, and it, may, it kind of paid off. We were able to almost one-shot the Tauros, which is pretty nice. Kind of wish we did one-shot it. Uh, we're probably going to get knocked out here, though. He just has to attach a Psychic Energy, but I'm fine with that. He has to devote his energy for the turn on Tauros instead of build something up. It's fine by me. He does play Max Elixir, which is kind of scary. He puts a DCE on, so that's pretty good. I'm glad he had to devote a DC to do that. Which might mean he's going to play the Bridget, then, because he probably would have went for Sycamore instead. But yeah, it looks like he's going to do Bridget then, I guess. Um, maybe I shouldn't have ended him, but you know what? I think that play was kind of fun anyways. I want to attack with Trevenant, but I can show you guys how Trevenant can be a little less OP. The fact that we didn't one-shot him is a little concerning. Um, even with a choice ban, we weren't able to one-shot a Tauros, which kind of sucks. But you know, we still turned off Trevenant. If this wasn't a Tauros, that 150 would have been really nice, because how would my opponent respond with an attack in return? Would have been nice to have done that 150 to an Espeon, though, with a Trevenant break and play because we would have taken it out but it is what it is um bridget does find him a ranguru and a couple of eevees i'm fine with that i think at this point maybe lycanroc can kind of just carry us home because we can use a strong energy and then our claw slash will be able to take out garboder in one hit which is cool so yeah our trevenant will go down we showed off trevenant and how it can be very brutal with the end combo didn't pay off but uh it's fine we'll bring out phantom here and i think i'll go teammates Okay, so we'll grab Trevenant. I guess we can keep attack with Trevenant. Again, I do want to use my Trevenant in this game. I don't just want to use my Lycanroc. I do want to try out the Trevenant and see how good it is. This is about playtesting a Trevenant deck. Um, so we'll go Abyssal Hand for two. I already know we're going to knock him out because he has a Sycamore in his hand. There's a Lycanroc. Um, I obviously am not going to do a Bloodthirsty Eyes quite yet because I don't want to bring out something and keep this Mad Bull in play. 
So I think we'll keep that. But yeah, we already know he's good. we're going to knock him out. So we can do 90 damage. Swing him for 90. Trevenant, you know, did some good damage to his Tauros here, which is pretty nice. We were able to use the Trevenant kind of nicely there. Um, but yeah, we can show you guys how Trevenant can struggle. Again, the, the weak damage that we could do when your opponent can easily play their items down from their hand. But we were able to do quite a bit of damage with Trevenant. We took out a Tauros with it. I like that. One prize for two seems good. Um, so he brings out Garb. Now, will Garb knock me out? I don't think it does. He is going to energy evolution to an Espeon, though. So we're going to see that Espeon come down. Um, so maybe I can try and get Trev Break and like Lycan Rock and Lysander. Okay, so he is going to end me here. Kind of sucks. I did like that hand quite a bit because we would have been able to build up a Lycan Rock and stuff. That's fine. Uh, we'll see what this end gives me. I'm, uh, one good thing, we have used our teammates, so VSC could get that. Alright, now obviously end isn't like a too big of an issue because we do have Octillery, but it looks like he will drop a Flareon down. Meaning, uh, he will knock us out because we played three items, which means he's going to do exactly 120 damage. So, Trevenant, my boy, you ain't going to take a hit from Garb. That kind of sucks. So, our Trevenant is going to get knocked out to my opponent's Garboder here. Rip in the chat. Garboder will take out my boy Trevenant. Sad days. Uh, he's going to do exactly 120 damage. But we can bring out our Rockruff here. And uh, hopefully Rockruff... Um, we got, uh, hopefully we can find teammates. Um, so... We'll put down Lycanroc. We could do Blood Thirst. I mean, we could go Dangerous Rogue. I mean, Garbodor's only doing 60, so I actually think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and Dangerous Rogue him here. I don't think I'll whip the Fighting Energy. We have a lot of bots to hit it. So, yeah, I'm actually going to go for a Dangerous Rogue here. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping for Via Secret, though. Nah, we didn't hit it. We'll put a Phantom down. Um, we kind of have to go for Sycamore. I can't really risk the end of 4. I'm actually just going to take out Espeon now, I think. I mean, Garboder isn't really doing much damage. Plus, if we get a strong energy here, we'll be good. So, two are in the deck. Okay, so yeah, I think I'll just swing the Espeon here. Seems like a good play. I'm not going to grab anything. Maybe I should have, but I didn't want to discard anything. And, alright, we do hit our strong energy, which is awesome. So, we are going to be able to take out this Espeon here. We will hit him with a Dangerous Rogue, knock out this Espeon. And at this point, we just need to take two more prizes to win the game. Which I think is what makes that play a little more gratifying. So that's kind of why I went for it. Might be a bit of a question, like, why not take out the Garboder? But we take out his Espeon. Now we're just down to two prizes, which means two more prizes and we win the game. So I think it's better just to take that Espeon. Not to mention Espeon still has Divide GX, which could have been very scary since we have, like, 90 HP, 60 HP Pokemon chilling on our bench, not doing anything. So I think that play has some justice. He will put an Espeon down, be my guess. Once I get a Trevenant Break going, you know, it's good for me. Um, so we'll see the Garboder probably just do a Trash Lanch. He is, I think, doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, you know, we've played 60, 80. He's doing 80 damage, so... Okay, so he's not doing too much. I thought he was doing more damage. He's only doing the 80 damage, so we're still going to get two-shotted by... Or three-shotted by Garboder, which is pretty good. So that seems good to me. I think we're in a good spot right now. Um, you know, we're kind of end-proof, too, which is really good. So it's not really going to be a big deal if my opponent tries to, like, end me to two or something. And he's like, alright, I'll end you to two, try and buy some time. So, Octillery has given us an end-proof situation. It's going to be tough for my opponent to win. The fact that he put the other Espeon down means if we can find our Trev Break, maybe we can just one-shot Espeon and win the game, if that play ever comes to us. He will Giovanni Scheme, which is kind of annoying because that does... Oh, never mind, he's actually just drawing a card. It's kind of weird he plays Giovanni Scheme over Professor Kikui, which would have been a good thing for him to play, but I guess he doesn't play it. Uh, but you know what? I think the best thing to do here is maybe just... I think we'll just bring out the Espeon, or the Sylveon, yeah, the Espeon, why am I saying Sylveon? <laughs> we'll bring out the Espeon, my bad, and uh, we'll just do 160 to it and say, alright, if you cannot retreat this thing next turn, I am going to win the game. So, I'm just going to go Revitalizer here, put the Trevenant down, uh, I'm just trying to burn some cards. I know it's playing items, but again, all we have to do is do 40 damage to this Espeon after this turn, and we're going to knock it out, so, yeah. So I think I'll do Ultra Ball. Again, I'm burning all these items, but I'm going to do it just so that we can thin out the deck a little bit. We'll grab the Treb Break. I would like to use it here, but I don't really know. I don't trust my Treb Break. Um, we'll go with Abyssal Hand here. I mean, if I don't hit DC, I won't go for it. We do hit it. I don't know. I think we'll just go Claw Slash. And uh, again, we'll put the 160 on him. Again, Lycanroc clearly is the better attacker than Trevenant. It's more consistent. You don't have to worry about your opponent playing cards from their hand. Maybe we would have won the game with Trevenant. Maybe that was a misplay and I should have went for the Trevenant KO. 
but again, I already put the energy on the Lycanroc as it is, so it's like I kind of already put the energy on, but yeah, maybe that play would have been opened up, but we actually saw my opponent's hand there, I actually think we only would have done 90 damage, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I actually didn't tag with Trev there. But we do have the Lysator in our hand, so even if my opponent retreats with this Altar of the Moon, we can just bring it up and win the game with Bloodthirsty Eyes. Um, or a Claw Slash, sorry. So it is looking good. But yeah, you can see why I like Lycanroc. It's such a good at backup attacker. As you can see, Lycanroc is carrying us mostly throughout this game. Trevenant did take out a Tauros, so we showed off our Trevenant nicely. But you can see our Lycanroc is put in work. And against a pretty good matchup, too. Garbodor is a good matchup thanks to Trev Break, I think. Um, but I'm glad we are pooping on him. Uh, we will see the Field Blower here which will get rid of my hand, but now he only has three cards in his hand, so I kind of wanted to just win the game with Trev Break, but it looks like we're going to have to just knock him out with Claw Slash, because he only has three cards in his hand, none of those could be trainer cards, even though he's taking two prizes here, I think it still is safer just to go Claw Slash, just to guarantee the win, because he just needs two more prizes and he wins the game, so I think I'm just going to play it safe here, and just Claw Slash him, I don't want to just, I don't want to risk it, because you never know, my opponent might not even have a trainer in his hand, so I think I'm just going to play it safe, knock him out Claw Slash, I wanted to show off the Trev Break there, we didn't get to show it off as much as I wanted to since Lycanroc kind of just hogged it, but we did show off the deck nicely there, we will get another game in with the deck to show it off a little more, but we are going to get some challenges done, I'll take those 60 coins, saving up for Burning Shadows, which is going to be pretty lit, um, so yeah, I think that showed off the deck nicely there, we will get another game in with the deck in just a moment, so I will see you guys in just a sec with another match. Alright guys, let's go find another match here with the deck, that Garb has to be on, <laughs> it's always sad to find a beat Garb, but it was pretty good. And alright, it looks like it's going to be Volcanion. Yep, he even has a Volcanion coin. He's just, just to prove he's playing Volcanion, my opponent's just running that Volt coin. Uh, so let's go here with the coin flip. Hey, okay, Cyndaquil, you're not letting us down. Now, this matchup could be interesting. Now, in the original build, I ran Vaporeon, but I don't anymore, so we'll see how this game ends up going. Uh, we'll start with Phantom here. We'll bench Lycanroc. Uh, maybe Lycanroc will carry us through the game. We'll see. Um, so it's definitely a Volcanion deck, obviously. No duh. <laughs> so our hand is okay we got the force giant plan so turn one trev could definitely happen we are weak to fire though so trevenant unfortunately might not be too good in this game i think it's just better just to straight up build up lycanroc here um but since we did top deck the end there i think we're just gonna go bridget here well we didn't top deck it obviously we won't well, i don't even remember but obviously we got the mulligan so i think it's just better we'll go bridget here and i think i'm just gonna bridge it for probably Remoraid and Phantom and Rockruff. Yeah, sure. I mean, we could still use Trevenant, you never know. Um, just because we put Trevenant Break in play, though, doesn't mean we're going to be immediately become a Psychic type and get a Psychic Weakness. We're still going to be weak to Fire, which kind of sucks. So, I think it's better just to let Phantom take one for the team here and then just knock out Lycanroc. Like, we have a really good hand. We, we let him knock me out. We then use our teammates, grab Lycanroc and probably a DCE, Dangerous Rogue with the Volcanian EX on the bench and go from there, which seems like a good play by me. As long as he doesn't end me, uh, this play should pay off. Plus, Lycanroc, uh, Claw Slash does one-shot Baby Volk, thanks to the DC, which is pretty sweet. So, thanks to Strong Energy. So, that's pretty good. We will see a Lele here. I actually hope he doesn't end me here, because I really like this hand. I think this is a really strong hand. If he ends me, that's going to suck. Because um, teammates is kind of going to be our way to take out this Volcanian this turn. So, yeah, I'm praying he doesn't end me here. Yeah, it looks like he is, alright. I mean, it might also be pretty good just to Claw Slash this Baby Volk, slow him down a little bit, but he could play a Max Elixir, so he could easily just Max Elixir and draw into something. Um, so my opponent is going to end me here, rip the teammate to play, unless we draw into it again. It'd be pretty nice if we do. Hey, okay, we still draw into teammate. Never mind. Alright, sweet. Uh, we do see a Choice Fan going down as active. Another Volcanian on the bench, and we are going to see a Power Heater. It is going to take out my poor Phantom. Phantom being weak to fire. But he only got one steam up off last turn, which is good. So maybe it is better to take out the baby Volk here and leave him stranded. Or Dangerous Rogue him. I mean, alright. Let's just put the energy on and uh, let's just go teammates here. Right, maybe looking back now, this play wasn't too good. Uh, we can grab a Trevenant though. I guess we'll Dangerous Rogue him. Might have been better, to be honest with you, just to take out the baby Volk. Um, maybe I should have done that. I kind of regret not doing that now, I'm not going to lie. Um, again, this is this is a pre-recorded match, so I maybe I, maybe that play wasn't too hot. Um, maybe I should have just done that, but we can't get our artillery down. Yeah, I should, maybe I should just take it out as baby Volk, but it's fine. We can go abyssal hand here for three, slap him with dangerous rogue, and uh, go from there. So we'll go dangerous rogue here, take him out. The cool thing too, I mean, we can still 
do a lot of stuff next turn. We find a choice band and we can put the strong energy on. We can actually probably bring up another Volcanion and knock it out. So yeah, maybe this play has some justice to it. I still think maybe it was better just to claw slash the Volcanion in the active spot. Take it out, leave him with no draw support. Or, yeah, leave him with no energy support. I mean, nah, he still had the Brooklyn Hill Volcanion star he plays, so. Yeah, okay, maybe the play wasn't so bad. He will end me to four, but again, thanks to Artillery being in play, ends aren't really going to be a big diff deal at this point. Uh, we'll see what we find here. Uh, there's strong energy. All right, so all we need is a Lycan Rock, and, uh, yeah, we need Lycan Rock and Choice Band, and we can knock out that Volcanion EX on the bench, which is what I want to do. So, yeah, it's going to do Power Heater. 110, holy cow. Baby Volga's going to two-shot us. That is pretty ridiculous. That is pretty ridiculous. All right, so the play here, I think, is to try and knock out that Volcanion. We do top deck like it rocks, so I think it's better to go all in here. We're going to have to hope we hit the choice band here to take him out. So we can put Forest down. We can do Abyssal Hand here and uh, hope to hit it. Kind of wish I could do teammates. All right, we don't find choice band. We can go Shaman for two. I'm going to dig pretty hard here for choice band, guys. Alright, we got Floatstone, we can put that on Artillery, we got Ultra Ball, we can thin up the deck a little more. Hopefully we don't whiff our Choice Bands, I swear if we do, I'm gonna cry. Grab the Treb Break, or Phantom, yeah, grab Treb Break is better. Uh, we'll grab our Trebnet Break here. If we whiff Choice Band, though, I am going to be so annoyed. Come on. We we did so much to draw into it, are we gonna whiff it? We whiff. We whiff the Choice Band, guys. Take take that in. That is really annoying. How? We whiffed our choice band. You know, we would have probably have been in such a good spot, but we whiffed it. Now we're going to claw slash him, and he's going to volcanic eat us. I mean, I guess we can finish him off with Trevenant, but holy cow, that is so annoying. How do we whiff the choice band? I will never know. That is probably the most devastating. And he's going to limp here just to rub in the soul. All right, now, is he going to knock me out? He isn't. All right, so he's only going to do 50 damage, so... We still have a potential. We haven't played our Lysander yet, which kind of sucks. I don't know if we can draw into it considering how big our hand is. I mean, it does let us build up another Lycanroc, which is nice. I can't believe we whipped that Choice Band, though. That is so frustrating. If we hit the Choice Band, we would have taken him out, but we didn't. I think I'll just Floatstone... Yeah, we'll Floatstone the, uh... Floatstone Shaman, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll go Abyssal Hand. Can we find our Lysander here? If we get Lysander, that'll make up for the whiff. And we don't hit it. Uh, we probably got the worst card we could have gotten. Two DCEs and a special charge and a Sycamore. That is brutal. That's not very good. I am... I'm not really too happy about that whiff there. That, The fact that we whiff Choice Band and Lysander... Yeah. The, this game hates me, man. Oh, that... that if we took out that Volcanion, this, that could have been huge. We would have been in such a good spot. And uh, now it looks like we're going to get completely dumped on by my opponent here. Uh, that is so brutal. Max Elixir 2. That's enough. Alright, does he find a fire? I mean, if he whiffs an energy, maybe this could be good. I don't think he's going to whiff energy, though. Switch. He did whiff, but he's already got the choice made on, so he will knock us out with Baby Volk, so it doesn't matter. Oh, no, he didn't whiff. Alright. It looks like he's taking the time to build up more Volcanians, which might be the better play than just Volcanic Heat Me. Man, th those two whiffs are massive. Two turns in a row, we whiff two cards to be able to put us in a position where we just need two prizes to win the game, and we whiff both of them. That is just brutal. That that sucks so much. Like, look at our hand. Three DCEs, special charge, and a Sycamore. Like, no thanks. Um, we don't even get our Lysander either. Yeesh. All right, let's just go special charge, I guess. I don't want to do Sycamore, so I think I'll do Teammates instead. Yeah. We'll go Abyssal Hand for one and try and hit Lysander. Sycamore, yeah. We only play one Lysander, so I'm not expecting to hit it. So let's just go Teammates here. And, I mean... I don't know what to grab. We can get the Lysander for next turn, I guess. <sighs> I guess we'll grab Revitalizer, too. Might s I don't want to sacrifice a Trevenant, though. Hmm. I'm tempted just to bring out a Tapu Lele. Maybe I should have just went for a Treb Break there. Might have been the better play, I don't know, but... I think we'll just retreat. Uh, I don't want to bring out Lycanroc. I guess we'll do it. We'll Claw Slash him. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't the best of plays. I think maybe I regret that. 
we can still finish him off with Trevor Lele though, so I guess that has some work to it. I think we can retreat into Lele. Alright, we see a floatstone. I'm glad I didn't do the field blower, because he would have just floatstone. Alright, my opponent will do a field blower of his own. We'll see what he gets rid of. He's probably just gonna get rid of floatstone and choice band on my Trevenant and my artillery. On Shaman. That's weird. Okay. Interesting. We're gonna see a steam up from my opponent. Okay, maybe what we can do. I mean, if he didn't have two cards, Sycamore, ooh. Hmm, we'll see what happens here. I might just have to retrieve my Lycan Rock. Um, okay, he's gonna put a Brooklyn Hill down, rip the forest. Starmie going down too. Yikes. He's gonna be able to do 110 damage to me again. I think those whiffs are, I think, what really cost us the game. I think if we didn't whip those two cards, we probably could have just won the game. Which is just brutal that we did whiff. I think we're gonna have to retreat Lycan Rock here. Because we're going to take a lot of damage. I don't think we can take him out. We could take him out with Trevenant. I think we can just finish him off with Tapu Lele. 110 damage. Jeez. Yeah, this is kind of brutal, guys. Those whiffs with the Choice Band and Lysander, they're really costing us here. Because all we had to do was take two prizes and win the game, which would have been easy to do. We've used two VS Seekers, too, so the teammates could be rough. All right. I think it's best to retreat here and try to deny him as many prizes as possible. There's Forest. All right, nice. Or we can bump that Brooklyn Hill. Uh, yeah, I think we just retreat into Lele. I think it's safer to knock him out Lele. Because, again, my opponent could easily just not even have, um, thing. So, we'll Lysander the Volk. I think we can do that. Because then all we have to do is find Lysander, and then we can win the game. And there's Via Seeker. Alright, so, we do win the game next turn. I think I'll do Resty Stretcher too. Just, maybe I should, nah. I might regret that if we do get end. I uh, won't do it. Whatever. But, yeah, I think it's best to just do Energy Drive here. Take out that Volcanian EX. And, uh, yeah. Looking pretty good. I should have rest for Treb Break. Uh, but we're going down to one card. But again, I think we're end proof at this point. We have Octillery in play, which is pretty good. Um, but all we have to do now is take out that Volcanian on the bench. And we win the game. We have the Via Seeker in our hand. So we can Via Seeker the Volcanian next turn and win the game. But no, my opponent's going to end me. Oh, no. He's ending me, which... Oh, that could be bad. And, oh, we get an end. Alright, we still have Abyssal Hand for five. It's not over yet. We still have our Abyssal Hand. So he brings out the Volcanian EX. And let's see what else he does. Okay, Steam Up. Alright, I don't think he has a Knockout. I think he's actually out of Volcanian, so we can do Brooklyn Hill. So yeah, we're going to survive the turn here, which is good. Alright, what do we top deck? Field Blower. Yeah, I think we I think we can play. We'll get rid of that Floatstone Choice Band, I guess? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Uh, we'll go with Abyssal Hand here. Do we find the Lysander? We don't. I swear, man, this game hates me. This game hates me. It didn't want to give me the Lysander. Ah. Uh. Hmm. He's definitely going to retreat into, like, Tapu Lele. I think I'm going to bring out the Trevenant. Trevenant's the only thing that can take a hit here. Now let's go Poltergeist. Hey, alright, he had two Lysanders. Alright, we can do 60 damage to him. I think the fact that we're denying him prizes is huge, but we need to find that Via Seeker. We have two left in the deck. The odds aren't very low, so we better hit Via Seeker very, very soon. Because I don't want to lose the game otherwise. So we'll see if he takes me out here. Space Beacon, okay. He can do 100 damage to me, so we'll still be able to survive a hit from this baby Volk. But yeah, we, we need to find that Lysander. All we need to do is hit Lysander and we win the game. Please, don't do this to me today, game. We just we just need the Lysander to win the game. We have two VS Seekers left. Um, but we do have that Rock Rough play, so I mean, if he does take a prize at some point, we do have Rock Rough, Lycan Rock. So that's, I guess that pays off why I did Rusty Stretcher. But we desperately need to find that VS Seeker. If we whip the VS Seeker, guys, we're going to lose the match, which is not good. Because <laughs> the amount of whiffing that has happened in this game is unreal. That... This has probably been my most unluckiest match ever, and we see a Lysander, so he's going to take out Tapu Lele. Okay, looks like he's going to spare my uh, Lycan Rock, um, which is interesting. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so... This is brutal. We'll bring out the Octillery. Kind of wish we had a stronger gen Lycan Rock, too. There's Rock Rough. Alright, so we're setting up maybe a Lycan Rock play, I guess. Um, can we survive the turn, though? That's the question. I don't know if we can. I think we have to go all in. Abyssal Hand for two? Alright. Lysander. 
No, where is my line stander, dude? Ah, it's so annoying. I'm gonna have to ultra ball him too and thin out the deck a little bit. Alright, maybe I should go Sika. I think we'll end him though. Um, okay, Lycroc is in the deck, we'll grab it. It doesn't really matter what I grab. Um, hmm. Alright, we'll end him to one. I feel confident that I'm gonna hit my Lycroc. Oh, and. Okay, we'll end him to one just so we walk out of like, so we can't retreat or anything. Oh, well, no, yes. Starry, star me. Alright. The fact that we whiffed Lysander is so bad. Uh, we know we have the two Lysander in his hand, too, so he could... Ah, oh, man, we're screwed. We are screwed. How did we whiff? <laughs> Dude, the whiffing that happened. And a float stone. Oh, boy. He has to retreat. There's a space beacon. All right. That's game. That is game. <laughs> oh, no. I can't believe we end him into the perfect can to give him the float stone. Now I regret doing that field blower. Guys, I think that'll wrap up the game, obviously. We're gonna lose. Man, that sucks, dude. The fact that we whiffed... I mean, I wasn't expecting that from an end of one. Whoops, I just pressed privacy if I was gonna concede, but... Oh, man, I can't believe we whiffed so bad. The whiffing, the, we whiffed the choice ban, the Lysander. I, I don't believe it. The amount of whiffing that happened in that game was just too much, but I think we still tried our best to put up a fight. I think we still put up a decent fight there. We tried to nine as many prizes as we could at the end of the game. Try to keep them from winning. Um, but unfortunately, we weren't able to prevail. We got so unlucky with hitting Choice Ban and our Lysanders that it just ultimately cost. But I think that'll wrap up today's video, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, hit like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Help me on the road 2K subs. And uh, yeah, see you guys later. Sadly, we whiffed, but I think we showed the deck. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Peace out.